Sweet School on RealArtCulture.com is brought to you by Syngenta Canada, Alberta Wheat Commission, and CNM Seeds. Hi, I'm Jason DeVoe with the Ministry of Agriculture, Food and Rural Affairs here in Ontario, and I'm joined here today with Troy Basaraba from Brandon, Manitoba. We're very fortunate to have Troy here to talk about Fusarium head blight, protecting against that disease. Troy, let's assume we've made the right product choice. We're in the window for spray application. It's time to let the sprayers roll. There are still a lot of ways we can make or break a good application. Can we talk about some aspects of that? Absolutely. And Basically, once, like you said, once you're kind of ready to go, you got the sprayer at the edge of the field, the next step is applying the product onto the head. And they even still, the, the, the grower's job is not done at that point in time because there's a lot of ways that we can do a really good job of applying the fungicide, but there's also a lot of other ways where we can maybe not do as good a job as, as we intended. And some of that comes down to nozzle selection as well too. Okay, so there are some basic factors in spray application that we have to take account of. Things like droplet size, the weather conditions, uh, and the angle as you pointed out. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit about the droplet size. Does it matter that we're using a big droplet or a little droplet? Absolutely. Um, especially as we start to, to try and send that droplet towards that target and specifically going after that wheat head. Right. Uh, the, the, the droplet size does come into play. Obviously a finer droplet will give you incredible coverage. However, a fine droplet, as you know, Jason, can be very susceptible to wind, to movement off target. Uh, that's something that's out of our control. So especially when we start looking at trying to get that fine droplet on there, we got to be extremely diligent. However, as we get into the medium or even into the coarse droplet sizes, the droplet size gets a little bit bigger and allows the, uh, the operator the opportunity to more so direct that droplet and to do a better job of directing it onto the head. So you're pointing a lot on an angle here, so I'm leading you a little bit. I think you're talking about twin fan nozzles and the asymmetricals, right? Oh, good segue, Jason. Thank you. Um, ordinary single vertical nozzles, kind of like the one that I'm holding right here. We use this a lot with regards to in-crop herbicide work. Uh, however, when we're going after this wheat head, it's maybe not as good of an option, simply because we have a single vertical pattern that comes down like this. Right. And it's, it will actually be really good at coating one side of the head but as that sprayer moves past and as that pattern stays vertical, it does not do a good job of wrapping around and covering the back of the head. And this is why we start to look towards the twin fans or the forward backward style of orientation to do a better job of coating not only the front, but also the sides and the back of the head as well too. So when you're using a twin fan, if you want that aggressive angle, and I imagine a larger droplet is more effective at moving on the angle that you fired it, yes. whereas a fine one would just kind of go wherever it wanted, does it matter how high our boom is compared to where the wheat head is? Absolutely, and especially like you said, a fine droplet, uh, even if you shoot it out on the angle, very susceptible to the wind, so the wind could, could come out of the, the sprayer like this, the wind could grab it, and it just moves it straight sideways and off target. Larger droplet, we we're able to direct it a little bit more, but we still have to be diligent that, you know, gravity still plays a part. Sure. Uh, so when that droplet comes out, if you can hit it, get that droplet to hit that wheat head and get coverage before gravity takes over, you've done an awesome job. If, you, if you're too far away from the boom, the droplet comes out and then it starts to slow down due to wind shear and then gravity takes over, that droplet will fall vertically right past the head and miss that head entirely. So more or less, you've just purchased a nice twin fan and now you're right back to having just a single flat fan all over again. Yes. What about water volume? You know, water volume, water's a great thing. Water covers up a lot of mistakes that we may or may not intend to do. Uh, we always say 10 gallons is, is the absolute minimum that we do, but more water is better. More water covers up a lot of things that are potentially beyond our control. We've seen very consistently that 15 gallons is better than 10, and in cases, some cases, 20 gallons is better than 15. So let me try and wrap all this up. With product choice and timing out of the way, our next consideration is the spray job that we're going to do. Yes. We want to use a twin fan nozzle, and there are a lot of makes and models of asymmetricals, but definitely something that's coming off on two angles. Yes. We want to get those nice and low to the crop so that we take advantage of those angles. Yes. We want to use a slightly larger droplet to enable it to stay on course, not be blown off target, and the more water the better. Absolutely. Fantastic. You've got it all nailed. You want well, to come I've done this before. You want to come spray my crop? <laughs>